and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling uh, Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on another edition here of the Anything Wrestling Podcast, AWP. Um, unfortunately, it is not the full crew today. We are missing Dan the Man, but he will be back with us next time. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, it is I, the Shant, and of <clears> course... <throat> Is, is, is that like a frog in your throat or something? It's not a disease that's probably worldwide killing us either. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is the Kamish. Your humble advocate. Humble. Your attorney at law without a practicing degree. Oh. An overall man of this podcast. So what are we discussing today? I think I gave you a really creative idea since the creative team back there doesn't know what they're doing. Well, I'll let you introduce it since you brought it. Well, you kind of named it, so I'll let you So everyone always has these things of, oh, what if I booked it? What if I said this? Or what if I changed certain historical events in time and they transpired this way? And... We discussed it about a couple individuals that either are still currently with us or have, unfortunately, you know... Passed away. Passed away. And we wonder what would have been. We always wonder, like, what could have been yes. as well. So, I want to introduce this as a new segment called What If. Everybody does it with their favorite uh, sports, with their favorite actors, you know... Just life in general. Life in general. And even for yourself, like, you always wonder, what if I went left instead of right? What if I went up instead of down? You know what I mean? What if the streak was never broken? There we go. You want you want to get that out real quick? Just... I'm okay. I'll give you... It's too late at this point. I'll give you three minutes. You break it, and then you reinforce it by having Roman win, which didn't really do anything. So what's the point of me talking about? It seems like they never listen. Let's just do it, because we have to push the superstar, you know? Because he's Samoan, he's from that bloodline. I mean, The Rock did it well, so they'll cheer for him and everything will be fine. Oh, they're not cheering for him, so what do we do? Let's piss everybody off even more by having him not only win the championship against Triple H, but the next year defeat The Undertaker for the second time. And to just take that knife that was already in me and just turn it and let the blood leak out. Let's do that. But you're not mad, right? No. No, he's good. Okay. That went dark for a moment. That went really dark. Okay. I'm terrified. Remember what the therapist said? Just oh, good lord. Happy place. Happy place. I'm really glad that you're my friend. Because this is a friendship that will never end. No promises. Okay. What? What? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to look right. for uh, friends on Instagram. Anyways, so yeah, there's been a constant, constant wonder with this guy because he finally has come back after a few years of wonder, speculation. Does he like the biz still? Does he enjoy it? He doesn't work for WWE, but he does work for Fox. Ladies and gentlemen, CM Punk. Enter CM Punk. I think that uh, we were all sort of taken by surprise because they actually did a good job of masking the whole thing and not giving out any hints or spoilers for it. Which um, was great. Which was I which is awesome. It. And in a world like today's where everything gets leaked out, it's good to have a, a surprise. And it's funny that Fox knew how to do it. Not the WWE. Anybody taking notes? Good. God! Um, but the funny thing is the second I saw him, yeah, I found out chick magnet, chick magnet punk. Yeah. I never, I've always wondered. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chick magnet punk. Yeah. Nice. Um, so the second when he came back, I think everybody's creative juice started flowing. Oh, is he going to come back? When's he going to come back? How's he going to come back? Who's he going to feud with? And I was so anxious to start recording, and unfortunately it took some time, but we're finally here. And the commission, myself, we want to start off our first segment of What If with... CM Punk? CM Punk. Let's see. Okay, so we, we kind of need to refresh people about 
his unfortunate departure during a very critical time. Oh, in WWE? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so Punk... Uh, Out of random. Yeah, I mean, fair to say that since he won the championship, the, the last time for the... For 400, 300, 300 or 400? 434 day reign? 434 day reign. Uh, people would think that, oh, longest reigning champion, he's happy, he's getting all the big bucks. Eh, it's guaranteed that this guy's going to stay in the company forever. Actually, Punk has gone on to Colt Cabana's podcast and has spilled out that behind the scenes, things were actually not well. He was uh, suffering um, physically, mentally, he wasn't happy with the direction of the company. So, come Royal Rumble, he had just had enough. Uh, the, all his uh, injuries were catching up. And he left the company. I'm done. Not on good terms. Uh, there was a lot of uh, bad blood between Punk and Vince, Punk and Triple H. Uh, like I said, he went on the podcast months later and just ripped everybody a new one. Went on to, t- to try out a career in UFC. Bless him. Wasn't the best. I can appreciate the effort. Um, started a movie or so. And now we got the announcement a few months back that... CM Punk is back with Fox. Um, who, and he's on a weekly basis. He's on the backstage show and he just kind of gives his thoughts about what he thinks about an angle or a particular superstar or whatever. Which is something that's refreshing in this day because honestly, when you hear someone like Punk or someone who's not actively wrestling anymore like Booker T or... Um, Christian. Christian or... Page. Page. Let us know... Or even who's suspended or just, like, inactive due to injury. Like, what was it? Naomi, Samoa Joe, Ember Moon. They let you know. Like, honestly, this is their take of the industry. Yeah. They're still human beings who have to report to a job that they love. Yeah. But everyone has work grievances. Everyone feels upset at one point. Everyone feels, okay, I need me time to recuperate, to heal, to really think, is this what I want to do? Yeah. And that's what Punk did. And Punk is more... I want to say should be given and handed everything, but he has every right to decide. If I'm not happy, I don't have to be here. Yeah. I mean, granted, I may have done it not in the way that this company would want me to do it, but he still did the one thing most people need to do is think of themselves and think of what they want for themselves long term. Yes. Because he's still a husband to somebody. He's still, you know... A friend to people he's still somebody's son you you have to worry about yourself yeah I don't care who you are man woman child doesn't matter but now it's like okay he's enjoying something he loves but he doesn't have to do it to the capacity that he is being told to do he yeah. can do it on his terms and how he wants yep however what if here we go we thought otherwise What if we could play the role of, okay, as a fan, you get someone you wanted to come back, and you get to creatively decide how they should come back, and how much control they have, or whatever the situation may be. Yeah. So, we're starting with Punk, because everyone was excited. Everyone was like, holy shit, you know, the man himself is back. Yeah. The culture... Is about to change. Yeah. You know? And Sean texted us. He messaged us on Instagram, on Facebook. He was excited. And we thought... Well, I thought of the idea of like, okay. You always wanted to see how you could book someone. So, I'm going to give you the creative control over Mr. Punk's career. As the minute he arrived back, how would you book him? How would you have him have his career? Okay, so I've been thinking about this long and hard. And to me, Punk is he's very much desired. You hear it. You would always hear it every time a Stephanie was out there, every time a Vince was out there, CEM Punk, CEM Punk. So I thought of it and I said, you know what? A Punk return, what it, it, it needs to, you can't just do it on a Raw where he walks to the ring and you see him in all his glory. You have to contain it. So I was thinking, we're talking about when he first comes back to backstage, 
He does a few episodes. All right, cool. You're giving your opinion. And then this is where you blur the lines of backstage going from just a BT behind the scenes show to a, a, a part of it kind of being semi-scripted. So I was thinking, you know, um, there would be a moment on backstage where Punk is asked about NXT. He's asked about it. What do you think of NXT? And Punk goes, I like NXT. I just don't like who's in charge of it. Triple H. Ooh. So then, okay, all right, Triple H, we, he doesn't really comment, he goes, all right, okay, you said your piece, fine. And then Punk maybe once or twice more goes, I like NXT, I like the direction, the talent is good, yeah, just keep the owner away from the ring or trying to have a match and we'll be fine. And then we come to a moment where this is not going to be on Raw, it's not going to be on a SmackDown, it's not going to be on NXT, it's going to be on Backstage. We're down to the last... 10 minutes of, of, of an episode. Yeah. All of a sudden, the game's theme plays from those two double doors. Ooh. Triple H walks down, gets inside that ring, and stares down CM Punk and goes, you got a problem with me? And you tie that, you, you bring it full circle because CM Punk always had a problem with Triple H. So, okay, we're nearing WrestleMania, and Triple H goes, if you got a problem with me, why don't we settle it once and for all? So you take it to WrestleMania. But here's the thing. I do not want to see CM Punk making an appearance on Raw, cutting a promo. I want. I don't want to see Punk until it comes time for his entrance at WrestleMania. So, so no TV. No, no TV. N- not even backstage at that point. No. Okay. So he's off air. He's off air. He just says, okay, I'll see you at WrestleMania. You don't see Punk. Not on Raw. Not on SmackDown. No um, live satellite interviews, no social media, nothing. nothing, no, okay. because you need the hype and that pop, you need it to pay off. Because if you expose him on Raw, you expose him on SmackDown, you expose him on backstage, you interview him on social media, you do a special on the network. By the time we get to Mania, the pop that's supposed to be right here. Mid-level. It's going to be about mid-level. Because, because everyone's anticipating. We've everyone's seen him. Waiting for it. We've yeah. seen Punk. All right. Cult of personality here. It's cool. Okay. But when you... when you Take him away. Take it away and just... just, just Like, oh, maybe he really isn't coming back. Radio maybe silence. You give them radio silence. Okay. You can have Triple H come out, trash talk the entire time, and just... Just bring up dirty laundry that has happened from the first time when he walked out. Bring all that out. But at WrestleMania, you have it be the main event and you have Punk be the very last guy to have his entrance. He comes out, wrestles Triple H. In my own world, he defeats him. Because, yeah. you know. And then I want to take it over to... Um, so then Punk wrestles. And I don't want him to come back as a full-timer. Because first of all, I don't think that he would want that. I don't okay. think that he desires that. Sure. But there is one match that I think is an equal to an Austin versus The Rock at Mania, is an equal to Hogan versus Flair at Mania. So I'm thinking he does that one off at Mania. Okay, cool. The next year, when WrestleMania time comes around, and, and you can book this however you want, you can have a, a once again a backstage thing go on, you can have a CM Punk come out to the, to the ring and go. You know, I, there's many things that I've done here, but there's one thing that I haven't done on my bucket list. I think at WrestleMania, we need to see CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan. Ooh. Because to me, those guys were the definition of a small guy coming in and breaking that mold. Because for a long time, it was the big guys. It was the six foot five, 300 pound guys. Around that time when Punk was doing his thing, Daniel Bryan was doing his thing. Yeah, they crossed paths and they wrestled, but... Never at it WrestleMania. It wasn't big. It wasn't like the payoff that it could have been. Yes. Okay? So, for now, for for a beginner, that's where where I think CM Punk needs to do is is do those two things before he can consider maybe going to a okay. Saudi show and. So, I I like the direction of him being extremely part time. Yes. After Mania Thirty Six, yeah, you wouldn't have him come back at all. He could, but that would have to be his discretion. Okay. I, I wouldn't want to force anything. So, 
I would continue in the same direction you're going. Get the win over Triple H. I, I would put him over Triple H. Definitely, yes. Um, I would say at one point, whether it's an NXT show or maybe one of the guys from NXT moves up to a main roster, you have them six to seven months after Mania. Be like, I've wrestled these, these many guys, blah, blah, blah. I don't feel like I have competition yet. Whether you make it Gargano, Adam Cole, you get one of those guys, though. Yeah. Like, it, it, it can't be Daniel Bryan yet. You get one of those guys to coax yeah. uh, Punk out. Like, why aren't you here? Oh, what? You settle your vendetta and that's it? Yeah. Are you a chicken? Yeah. Do you not want to come back? Do you Have you proven everything? Are you I, really best in the world? Yeah. Like, you, you find a way to drag Punk back in. Because, like you said, you can't just bring him back in out of nowhere on a regular show. Yeah. But you have someone try to bring him back. Yeah. And let it be... Let it be Survivor Series. After weeks and weeks of that person being like, why can't you come back? Yeah. You, and then, you, you know what? They cut a promo on Survivor Series. You, maybe you're not the best in the world. Maybe you never were the best in the world. Song hits. Guys waiting for him out of nowhere. Blindsided behind. Okay. And you don't even have to have Punk cut a promo. He just blindsides them. Walks out. Go the regular entrance. Who's waiting for him? Daniel Bryan. Okay. You want... I, and you just have them look at them, and then you end Survivor Series that way. Then you have Daniel Bryan come back, finally explain his actions of why he didn't say anything, why he didn't, you know, try to like attack Punk. He he, he cuts a promo, but it, it's in the sense of I've faced many odds, many superstars. Everything. Yeah. I've won it all, but I've never faced someone that can test my true limits. Yes. I want to face the best in the world. Yeah. You have um, Daniel Bryan take over what so and so from NXT was doing. Was, yeah. You can involve this person to be like, no, it should be me, but you have. I would have Daniel Bryan bury that person just okay. for that purpose. Okay. Because, it, and Daniel Bryan, it. You can even bring back the no campaign. Like, no. No, it's not going to be you. It's going to be me. I'm the one who faces CM Punk. Not you. Not anybody else. It should have been me. Yeah. And then at Rumble next year, Rumble 21. Well, year 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get Daniel Ryan like, I want to face you. I, I want... To face CM Punk. This is where it gets a little gimmicky because he could cut the promo at the beginning of the Rumble. Then the men's match happens. Daniel Bryan enters in. You know, and he's like, fine, if I'm not going to get it, I'll, I'll go after a championship. Yeah. I'll, I'll win the Rumble. Who gets tossed out? Who tosses Daniel Bryan out? CM Punk. Yeah. But not because he decided to jump out of the crowd. You can have CM Punk enter in at what's a good number? At twenty one, at Edge's number <laughs> from this past uh, month, two months ago. Yeah. Whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> and then you know Daniel Ryan comes back. He eliminates Punk himself, and then you get this like build up of like, all right, you want me, you got me, you got me out yeah. like you wanted, but I'm not gonna wrestle anybody but you. Yeah. And I want you at Mania. And we finally get Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk. Straight up? Yeah. I would say, I wouldn't even book it where it's like, oh, you win or you win. I've always had this notion that certain wrestlers have always wanted to be like, no, I want to see if I can do it without it being told that he's going to lose to me or I have to lose to him. Yeah. I would like to think that CM Punk would be like, no, I want to wrestle Daniel Bryan and I want to see if he can really beat me. And 
whoever wins the match, it wouldn't matter. If Punk wins, cool. If Daniel Bryan wins, cool. I think that would be an even better build-up because it's like you have two guys who, honestly, as little guys, can wrestle a yeah, good match for sure. with anyone. Yep. And to see them go at it would be the best thing. But I wouldn't want it to be like, oh, we're going to book Daniel Bryan over CM Punk. Or we're going to put book CM Punk over Daniel Bryan. Yeah. The only thing to make it like viable is like you give them a 30-minute match. If they can't get it done in 30 minutes, it's over. Yeah. No contest. You find another way to prove it. Or buy that match alone. If none of you won, you, you can either be like, all right, you proved to withstand, but... Do we continue? And then they decide amongst themselves yeah. if they want to continue on. Because do we need like a best two out of three? Or do we need mm-hmm. like a continuous thing? Because at one point, if you keep booking the two. Overexposure. Yeah. And it gets boring. Like, all right, you guys have done this kind of match. You guys have done this. It kind becomes of Becky versus Charlotte. That isn't dead. But you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, right? yeah, I get your point. Yeah. I would even think if he faced someone from NXT, it would be a good match. Well, that's what I was at first thinking. If I could go back and just tweak one thing. When you were saying uh, someone from NXT is trying to get him to, to get out, I would say that maybe at an NXT takeover you have Punk wrestle, and then Daniel Bryan costs him that match. Ooh. And that's what leads to to Daniel okay. going. Do I have your attention now? I ruin your little NXT takeover comeback. You want to prove something? Let's dance at Mania. Okay. Are you truly the best in the world? Okay, I like that. You know, who would he wrestle in NXT? There's so many people. Uh, I would maybe say Johnny Gargano. I would think they could have like a five star match. I would even think him and. Uh... Uh, Tommaso. Tommaso, yeah. Could do it as well. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm kind of bored watching Tommaso and Gargano matches, even though they're always five star. Yeah, for sure. It's like, dude, they're going to kill each other at one point. Even Adam Cole. I'd be okay Ooh, with Adam Cole. That'd be nice. Yeah. I he he fends off Undisputed Era. Punk's going to do it. Punk's going to do it. Well, who's this? Who's this running knee? Daniel Bryan. Cost that a. Uh, uh, like you don't even see. Like, you don't even have the camera, like, zoomed out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you just... You just... That's it's it. It's like, cool. Oh. Yep. That'd be perfect. That's what I'd do. So, that's CM Punk. That's CM Punk. Okay. So, we started off with something modern. Now, let's dive into a blast from the past. Okay. The last time we talked about this, I literally walked away and thought, Jesus... That was some really good stuff. I felt like we we really hit this conversation home. So we were talking last time at a diner, and we were just kind of talking about wrestling in general. And then you brought it up to me and said, hey, have you heard about the fact that Owen Hart, back in the day, was almost going to be nicknamed The Game? I did. And we started talking, and I brought up an idea which maybe gave you some chills. Because I brought it full circle with another event that hit that you. That would change history. Yep. That would really rewrite everything. So, because I went with uh, Punk first, I'm going to let you take this one first. Okay. And then I will give you mine. So, Owen Hart. He was, before his tragic passing and horrible, like, catastrophe. He was supposed to still continue the gimmick of Blue Blazer. the Blue Blazer. At one point, even he knew, like, okay, no one's going to enjoy this anymore. But I have to reinvent myself, especially since we're going into this plethora of an attitude era. Yeah. So, okay. He, he gets frustrated, making him job out to a lot of people. And just out of nowhere, he takes his frustration out on a jobber. Takes off the mask. You know, kicks his ass really bad. He's like, I'm done. I can't do this. Enough is enough. Yeah. Walks out. Uh, this would, this was what? Early 97? When he passed away? No, he passed away in 99. 99, okay. Yeah. 
So 99, you already had the events that happened in the past. And he was the only heart member left yeah. in the WWE. Yeah. So on the rise, you had, was it Triple H in 99? Uh, yeah. Towards the, the yeah. WWE Championship? Yeah. Okay. Austin so, Rock and Triple H at that point. Owen Hart wanted to reinvent himself as the game. Let's just say that moniker sticked and Owen was still alive. You would have Owen come back. I would say... What was a good event? SummerSlam. Of... 99. 99. Yeah. And obviously, of course, it like however music would be for him or whatever. Yeah. But you would have him come back in this another reinvented look, but a more serious game changing effect with Owen Hart, where he was just as a crazy tactician like Brett, but he was aggressive like Triple H. Yeah. He was full blown heel. You know, like, I don't care. Manipulative. You get in my way, or I want something from you, whatever. He starts dominating. He even takes away Triple H's shine of becoming a champion at one point. He gets revenge on him for, you know, all the things him and DX would have done in the past. He gets revenge on The Rock. For all the things the nation, nation of domination. had promised him and yeah. obviously took away from yeah. him. And he couldn't even drive it further. Not by being the man who ran over Austin. But you can angle it in that I never wanted you around. Okay. I didn't break your neck completely, but I am going to run you over. It was me. Yeah. It was me. me. It was me all along. He rides his full blown heel tactic every now and then, a little bit of a baby face, but mostly a heel. Mostly heel. All the way circa 2002. Who comes back in 2002? Oh my god, you're taking my idea. Am you're, I? You're taking. Kai, okay, well. Well, I, I never told you no. about, about the second part, okay, but that's yeah, true. you're. you're, okay. you're, 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 you're so taking, we, we kind of have. We're, we're intersecting, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah, Shawn Michaels came back in he 2002. He comes back in 2002. Yeah. Um. What was it? He was... I forgot what brought him back exactly. NWO? Okay, so let's say the NWO tries the thing, but then, like, Sean's like, you know what, this is... He kicks himself out, yeah. technically. Literally kicks. <laughs> and he crosses paths with Owen. Okay. Now, everyone knows the history they have. And everyone knows that Sean has always been the thorn in Owen's side. Heart. So, at one point, you get Eric Bischoff creating the Elimination Chamber. Okay. You still have Triple H. You still have Sean. You still have Sean dealing with Triple H. Okay. With their own rivalry. Yeah. But, the sixth pod would be Owen. Okay. Waiting. Waiting. And you would eliminate everyone else except Sean and Triple H. And you have Owen like, who? Who do I want to destroy more? The guy who followed the thorn on my side or the guy who cost me everything? And my family. And you have Owen Hart win the elimination. The first ever elimination. Not Sean. Okay. But it eats away at Sean because it's obviously I'm the one who has ever won anything big or I've made it big to yeah. win something and you took that away from me and you can even develop their rivalry a brand new more just as aggressive as his in Triple H hell you can kind of get like a Stevie Richards esque triple threat at Mania <laughs> with the same aggressive anger yeah. with Sean Owen and, and Triple, triple H. H you spew this along for a while Owen kind of Shows us why he's the game. You know, he gets more championships. He, he he finally not only fills the shadow that his brother left, but he grows out of it as even further. Yeah. And it's like, 
the obviously Hall of Fame induction, multiple time world champion. I would retire Owen at that point by 2008. Okay. To the Undertaker. Let the Undertaker. Wow, interesting. Put Owen down as another victim. tombstone yeah. and victim of the street. Interesting. That's where I would take Owen Hart's career. Very extensive run with Owen because I know Owen was wrestling from like mid eighties, yeah. late eighties to two thousand eight. Yeah. So that's a, that's a long, um, that's tenure. a long career. So I dig it, and like I said, you <laughs> kind of found a way. You you, you, you found a way, yeah, to to yeah. intersect with mine. But so this will be no surprise to you because I told you the first part last time, but. So, you have the events of the Montreal Screwjob happen. Everyone remembers that. Everyone, Everyone still has... remembers that. Especially everybody in Canada. Mm. Mm. Um, by the way, a Broken Skull Session episode coming out with Bret Hart. So... Oh, we can't wait for that. Yeah, it's gonna, that's going to be interesting. But you have the events of the Montreal Screwjob happen. And then Owen Hart, he's just kind of, you know, fizzling in the background... Okay, all right. And then you have that that game moniker where he adopts that, okay, you know what? Attitude Era is taking off. I need to find my own identity. Just being a heart, you know, a part of the heart family is not going to cut it. I need to reach that next level. Being a nation wasn't even enough. Yeah. So you have that happen at Survivor Series. And then Owen all of a sudden comes out of his shell and goes, I'm the game. You guys know fun loving Owen. You guys know just the brother to Bret Hart. No, the game has changed. I'm the game now. So I want him to start feuding with uh, Shawn Michaels immediately because at this point, you know, Bret Hart is going to go to WCW. So it's like, who's there to kind of back up Bret and to kind of, you know, be that light, you know, in, in the darkness? So you have Owen Hart. Um, so you, know, you would have never had him do the. Blue Blazer. Blue Blazer, I would not have. Oh, okay. Have, yeah. Right. I would go up to him and go, oh, you know, we're now in this Attitude Era. What do you... What do you have to offer? What do you have to offer? So, you build it with, you know, Shawn Michaels teases him. Yeah, I, I screwed your brother out of this business. That's what he gets. You mess with me, I'm going to screw you out of this business too. We get to Royal Rumble 1998. Okay. Steve Austin still wins. You have that. But before the Rumble, you have a title match. Uh, WWE Championship, the champion Shawn Michaels versus Owen Hart. So the Undertaker match doesn't happen. The casket match. The casket match doesn't happen. Um, so you so you book to have Owen Hart, the last few seconds of the match, uh, Owen Hart goes, okay, you screwed my brother out of this business, right? Watch me screw you. He grabs, puts Shawn Michaels in the sharpshooter. Shawn Michaels, oh shit, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Shawn Michaels taps out. Owen Hart becomes your new WWE champion. Okay. And I would actually have Shawn Michaels ride off into the sunset there and not go to Mania and then ride off into the sunset. Yeah. So, because he already had... So you would have Shawn retire early. Yeah, for his, his first retirement, I would do it at the okay. Rumble instead of going to Mania. Then you have Owen Hart go and he feuds, feuds with Austin and goes, I broke your neck the first time, but I didn't finish the job. Now I'm going to finish the job. So you have Owen versus Austin at WrestleMania. Okay. And you still have Austin go over. Austin okay. era begins. But I want Owen Hart to be this full-blown manipulative cerebral heel where everything is carefully considered. It's thought out. The second when you think you have the match won, he, he finds a way to do something. Oh, he paid the referee in advance to do a fast count. Oh, he did this. You know, he hired a so-and-so to come and screw the match up. So, Owen Hart goes on this run. Going back to your point, we get to the year 2002. Who comes back? Sean. Shawn Michaels. Okay. However, this time it's different because Shawn Michaels is a born-again Christian. So, he's the face. Owen Hart, you know, he's the heel now. So, at this point, I was thinking that we have um, Sean and Owen kind of rekindle that feud. Again, Sean is the good guy. Owen is still that bad guy. Remember what I did. I retired you at WrestleMania. 
And actually, I was, at the Royal Rumble, yes. So you have the both of them feud, and I would have them feud, but it would kind of be like, okay, they feud, maybe, you know, a Shawn Michaels wins, and then Owen Hart continues feuding with, uh, with other people in the roster, like a Triple H or Jericho, a Jericho or Stevie. Um, but I thought about it and I said, okay, well, you would have to cap off his career somehow. Owen Hart, event, uh, he has to eventually retire. So I would have the grudge match of um, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels versus, versus Owen Hart. Because if you think about it, Triple H and Sean were feuding, and then Owen Hart, going back to your point, comes kind of into the mix. So I would have those three face off, but I would have this be Owen Hart's retirement match. He doesn't have to, to lose, he doesn't have to win, but he says, This is my retirement. I am retiring after WrestleMania. So it's 2003, so that's. Yeah. 19. 19. 19. Okay. Owen Hart retires at WrestleMania 19. That would be how I would book it. Ooh. And then maybe goes into the Hall of Fame 3. How many ch- championships does he get? In your, I'd say multiple. I didn't put... Would you ever just do a couple, multiple, or just only one? I would do multiple, but they would have to be meaningful. Not just he wins it off of someone. Like, it would have to be, like, one would be from Shawn Michaels, obviously. Maybe somewhere down the line he feuds with Triple H and goes... I I retired your friend for the first time. Now I'm beating you. Maybe now well, it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Exactly. So I would have him maybe have two or three like title runs, but it would it would have to culminate. It would have to mean something, not okay. just oh he beat whoever was champion at that time. Would you think he could have worked well with Jericho, Stevie? Everyone that was on those rosters in Definitely. between ninety nine to oh two. Definitely. Okay. So I wanna name three people. Okay. You have to pick only one out of the three that would give them that would give you five star rivalry, five star okay. matches. Jericho. Mm-hmm. Stevie. Mm-hmm. Uh I immediately want to go with Stevie but I'm going to have to say Jericho why? Stevie when it comes to the match 5 star, no question okay. but when it comes time to build the feud I trust Jericho a bit more Jericho always seemed like he had the right gimmick, the right you know, uh, highlight reel segment, or the right thing to kind of, you know, keep... Coke someone yeah. out of something. Uh, Stevie, uh, he could have a good feud, but it, it was more... It was more of like, oh, Stevie got screwed out, so now Stevie has to, you know, we have to have, you know, the grudge match. With Jericho, it's more of like, my guest on the highlight reel, Owen Hart. So, Owen Hart, how does it feel to still know that your brother got screwed out of the WWE? Jericho, like, he, 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 can, he can get that out of you, you know, mm. where it's not only just the match, but it's the entire feud itself. So, and, and Brock, we can have a good match, but again, when it comes to feud it building, would it, it okay. wouldn't be what Jericho would be able to do. So, Jericho's the best option. For me, yes. What about you? Is it those three, or do you want to pick a different three? I'm trying to think who was at the roster at the time. That Owen Hart has not faced. Okay, I'll give you three names. Uh, Goldberg, who was there in uh, 03. Um, Hulk Hogan, Hmm. from 02 to 03. And. The Undertaker. Oh, yeah, I have to remember their gimmicks. Undertaker was still he was the uh, biker taker. Yeah. Hogan was uh, fresh out of NWO. Yeah, uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. 
Um, and who did I say? Goldberg. Say Goldberg. 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 Was still Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah. Out of those three, everything considered, not just match, yeah, no. viewed everything. Yeah. Considered. Out of those three, the Undertaker. Interesting. Why Taker? So uh, Goldberg can't. It'd be the same thing as Brock. As Brock, it's like okay, Forrest means someone who's more of a tactician. Yeah. Who plays dirty? Like you got that with Goldberg and Triple H, and it just seemed it, like, yeah. All right, well, Triple H is gonna co- go over and bury him. Yeah. That's that's the same thing you'd get. Um, with Hogan, it's like you kind of have a rivalry just because of Brett. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, my brother's still. I don't know if you've seen this video where Brett says Hogan's a piece of shit. Um, I haven't seen it, but I need to see it. Yeah, you'll you'll find it. Like he says it, like I guess on a live media stream, oh, okay. social media stream. But they wouldn't. The matches would be whatever to me. And with Undertaker, you would have. Owen being like that heel, like I got in your way, I cost you something, yeah, and I still think I'm better than you. And when Brett had his matches with Undertaker, they were always good matches. Good matches. You can just imagine the matches Owen and the Undertaker can yeah. have, and especially with like Owen, you know, not just playing dirty, but also being just a good wrestler as yeah. his brother, if not being at that time a little bit better. And I think. Story wise, match wise, rivalry wise, it'd be Undertaker better than the other two. Yeah, Taker was more talkative at that time mm-hmm. too, because he was biker Taker. So even if the Undertaker was Dead Man, Dead Man, yeah. it'd still be a better rivalry. It'd still be better matches. I would be. I, I would market it as uh, Dead Man versus uh, Blackheart. Like if, if it was like a Wrestlemania yeah, match, that's what uh, I would do. Definitely. So, I mean, we went through both what-if scenarios. Unless if you have any more... So the only really two I have now. I'm trying to think of other things. I, it not only is the what-if series that I want to continue with this, it doesn't have to only just be on wrestlers. It could be about certain moments in time. Or, you know what? We'll, we'll do one now. You mentioned it. If you could change the effects of the Montreal screw job, you okay. can change everything. You you have now been given the ability to rewrite history. And you can book it however you want. Is there a clean finish? Do we do what Brett wanted to do? Do we do what Sean wanted to do in a regular way? Like whatever you want to do, that's your moment to change. I just thought of something. Um, I would do the DQ finish that they had discussed, but the second when the bell rang, Vince, either Vince or Earl Hebner or someone, immediately grabs the WWE Championship and takes it backstage to Vince McMahon's office. That way you have the match, it gets a DQ finish, and Bret Hart has no chance of taking that title to WCW. So the bell is held hostage from... From Bret, Bret Hart, Hart, yeah. Even Sean. Even Sean. Okay. Just so Vince McMahon is rest assured that, oh, okay, now he can't take the belt anywhere. So Bret would still go to WCW. He would still go to WCW. Oh, without a belt. Without a belt. For sure, because now someone took it, you know? Okay. What would happen to the belt after Bret leaves? I would probably have like a tournament for it. For it. Okay. All like like your Shawn Michaels, your top stars, and people whom you're slowly starting to, you know. Like the Rock. Shan yeah. Rock. Yep. Okay. All right. If I could rewrite history. Yeah. I get the ability to put this put everything back in favor of Shawn. Not how so. So he wouldn't be looked at as the one who screwed who everything. Yeah. And made it like the mess that it is. Yeah. I would make it that Sean gets the sharpshooter on him. Brett finds a way out of it. The mess still continues. But Sean super kicks the hell out of Brett. And wins legitimately. Like shoot? No, like a good sweet chin music. 
It kicks them real hard. And but is the switch in music planned? Does Brett know that it's coming? No. Or is it... Oh, so Sean just does it. Like, yeah. Wow. Like, you were going to try to do what you wanted because That's you wouldn't give me what I wanted back. So I'm going to take it from you. But the right way. Damn. Like, you'd have Sean just kick him out of nowhere. He, he would, like, legit just kick him. Like, take the switch in music. Straight. It wouldn't be planned. It wouldn't come like, oh, it's coming like I'm yeah. prepping you for it. Yeah. It's like literally like, all right. Brett's like, fuck, what do I do? I, I got to beat him. I got to beat him. Oh. One, two, three. Damn. Oh. Wow. Because Sean wins. Jesus. Brutal. And it's seen as in a way like, all right, the match is legitimately over. Yeah. Brett's leaving. Yeah. Brett leaves defeated into WCW. Not screwed. Yeah. Yeah. And then he could try to do the whole thing he tried with Sting and Hogan. Oh, Jesus. But that's the one thing I would change. Okay. But at that point, you give Sean an edge. Because he's like, I legitimately beat the best there is. Or the best that never was. <laughs> or the best that never will be. Damn, actual shoot. Like, just mm-hmm. rearing back and kicking his head off. Yeah. Careful not to kill him, though. No, I mean, don't. Don't, uh, Ty Dillinger stand him. <laughs> Stan. <laughs> I just kicked Stan. Um, I but just no, kicked like Brent. A, yeah, like, he just... Sweet chins them out of nowhere. That would have definitely taken away a lot of the backlash from the Montreal screw job. Mm-hmm. The screw job technically wouldn't exist, but yeah, you would create this effect that like Brett maybe is a broken man after it. Yeah, and you would create this edge on Sean, but it gets it gets taken away in a good moment at Mania by Austin because yeah. it's like the Austin era really begins. Yeah. By, you know, what was, what would he say? Oh, the toughest son of a bitch yeah. in the world. And then it's like, okay, well, you thought you were bad, but you didn't, you couldn't even last against Stone Cold. Yeah. Austin. Goes into retirement, comes back, born again. Mm-hmm. Realizes his mistakes and his actions, but he wouldn't feel the guilt that Montreal has made him yeah. feel for years. Definitely. But that's the one thing I would change in time. Yeah. That moment. There's going to be plenty of moments that we will discuss that we would like to change. Yes, there even will be a full moment where the streak is left at zero. Because, yes, we've talked about it. Yes, we've talked about why it's happened. But what would the effects of the streak being at, what, 25 and 0? Roughly, yeah. Be, as opposed to 20, no, 24 and 0. No, no. I, I think it's 26 He's and 24 and 2, right? Yeah, 24 and 2. So it would be 26, 26 and 0. 0. Yep. What would 26 and 0 be like? What would it do to Brock and Roman and their careers? We, yeah. we will discuss that in another episode and we'll see also other events in time. Yes. People, places, things that if it had gone differently, how would it have affected everything? That as came far as, it. yeah, and a plethora of sports entertainment slash wrestling as we know it. So while you ponder all those answers, we will be back next time on another episode of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all next time.